Hey. I'm going to show you some ugly code, very ugly code. There it is. This was something I was just playing around with. Go ahead and run it. It's just I'm working on going through a making a calculator, basic calculator app and so I thought, well, I should just jump over and play with the user interface stuff and get a little bit more comfortable with that before trying to record a screencast where I incorporate this part into a larger program. And with the other screencast little series thing, I'm just sort of roughing it out. I'm not really going through, and this is the first time I've really like stepped aside and sort of tried to prep anything. But anyway, I felt like, well, there's value to be had here, so I'd like to share that. Um, so anyway, you can see it's just a window that has 10 numeric buttons on it. It's got this little entry box that doesn't really, it's just there. But whenever you click a button, it just echoes the button onto the screen. And this is the code that makes all all of that happens with just that code but as you can see the um, it's getting to where it's not just completely self-evident immediately I mean if you crawl through the code you can pretty much figure out what it does of course but it's starting to be and I've kept it kind of chunked together like that code is let me uh, fix my pointers it's supposed to be on these fatty ones so I'll go to like, I have to switch it off and then switch it back to my custom. Okay, yeah. Now you can actually see what I'm pointing at. Okay, so all of this stuff is, every time I like restart my computer or whatever, those go away, so that's why I had to do that. This uh, initiates the the main window, and then that stores that in this window object. Then it sets the title, of the calculator. Then this basically discovers where the uh, the center of the screen is, and it does that by getting the um, the width of the entire screen, dividing that by two. So the width of the entire screen would be some value over here. Then you divide it by two, and you end up right here and then it's getting the width of our little calculator window and so here I'll put that up on the screen and I'll uh, get that one out of the way so when it first calculates the screen width it ends up with the value that's way over way over here and then it um, divides that by two and it ends up over here and then it divides the window by two and then subtracts that which effectively slides the window about like that and then it does the same thing that would actually maybe you could say that would be up here somewhere like that and then it does the same thing with the y-axis and it comes down and gets the full y height then it divides that by two and then you know that just effectively places this part um, on the center of the screen but we sort of want like this five roughly to be the center of the screen so by subtracting um, half of this length we'll end up with right here because that's halfway it will subtract halfway like that and so that's how you end up with that in the center type of screen and so what it does is it does that with the uh, the horizontal value and then it makes sure it's an integer and it um, saves it in this variable and the same thing with the vertical value with the Y and then it comes over here and I like to use the old style Python strings so this um, the old style of string formatting and so this plugs those values in and just puts a plus sign that's how this geometry manager for T TK enter likes to one of the ways it likes to get its formats so that's just sort of necessary. So if you think about it, this is all the initialization of that window. And then down here, this effectively adds that entry, that little text entry bar. 
the display and then this is a configuration thing that just sets the um, the default button it sets it to a width of three and um, this basically boils down to like a sans serif Arial style font on most platforms Helvetica on Mac probably only on Mac or somebody who's paid and installed it and then it sets the point size to 12 pretty sure that's point size um, so you can see I don't know I guess I'm just crawling through this you don't necessarily need to know any every detail this creates the buttons the one through nine buttons and the reason this is like 60 30 negative 10 up here is because one of the things I was experimenting with was trying to um, to skip by tens when you're I was doing a grid layout for that calculator so instead of this being row zero this being row one or excuse me column zero one column two I not only started this one at the number one but by a factor of 10 so it's 10 20 30 and that way the idea there is if you want to go back and add like oh you know what I want to add like something in between here you can do that you can do that up to I guess 10 times so kind of like the old school basic programming the line number basic programming people would the convention was to go 10 20 30 name your lines like that and then if you have to go back and insert a few lines here or there it's no big deal so that's what's going on there and then the reason these are starts at six is because of uh, the row value that that happens to be if you consider um, from that one more time if you consider that this is uh, this is 10 20 30 40 50 hmm maybe it doesn't need to start on 6 anymore I can't really wrap my head around it right this second but I don't want to get caught up with that right now but anyway it's something to do with that it's got to start at the bottom because the ones on the bottom of the pad and then work its way back that's why it's the negative 10 increment because it's working its way back up each row so it starts at 60 it goes backwards by a row at a time up to but not including 30 okay and then when it gets in here this does each you know each column of a button and when it gets in here it just starts generating the buttons this is TK enters button uh, deal button constructor and then this applies it to the grid so this little bracket right here is effectively bringing it down to two lines it's kinda like the Pythonic way to do line continuation which is just always way uglier than it needs to be everywhere it seems like but anyway um, the only thing that really varies in here is this button function factory and that is the sole function or method if you want to think of this as a singleton object that this has and all it does is give us back a function basically just like this lambda down here this is basically what that entire thing does is that um, this thing right here does virtually the same thing except the only thing is is this label right here that value that's why we have to have this bigger drawn out deal right here instead of just a lambda because right here I gave it a literal value I gave it as passed it as zero it's not like a variable value and uh, so that works then it re then it gives command a function that will simply print zero effectively but right here if we were to do the same thing and pass it this count variable that starts at one and then it goes through and each time it's incremented so finally count ends up at 10 and then it won't uh, it won't go through it won't it will bounce out of the loop by then but count will be remaining at 10 so anyway um, I'm pretty sure it will be at 10 so yeah cuz after it does the 9 then it increments at one time right there okay so it uh 
every button would print that value if we were to use this lambda because the lambda will pull the value out of the like x it won't close around that variable value at that iteration through the loop so that's why we need that closure right there to accomplish that anyway and then later it will be easy to add like potentially multi lines of functionality right here instead of just printing the number um, with the lambda though you're kind of like limited to a single expression so even if you want to do anything more than just call some other function or whatever you're gonna to have to write another function but that would be one trick too is anyway I'll shut up about that so that's that um, and then a style thing where we make the zero button on that wider just like it is on like a PC numeric pad or something so that was just playing around with that but anyway if we come through here and go okay well let's just you know there's the button factory function thing button function factory so we know what that is here's initialize window so I'm gonna go ahead and write what each put a little comment above it you know because these things aren't totally obvious but they are if we creep through line by line we're gonna set set what a uh, button style and then what does this block of code do right here this is doing the one through nine buttons so that's something where like it's tempting in some scenarios to maybe create like a general function and that's always a good idea if there's an obvious way to do that to uh, you know not just create the one through nine buttons maybe because I'm thinking of like refactoring this stuff out to functions right so do I want to create like a, a one through nine function or do I anyway we're not quite there yet I guess I'm jumping the gun so I'll just go ahead and right now we really shouldn't be thinking that far we should just label out what this block does but that's kind of where I'm headed with that so this block is create buttons one two nine and then uh, what's this this is wide button zero wide zero button okay I think that's it save it run it make sure I didn't create any new bugs whatever good enough okay so now it's a little easier to go through and see what's going on because our eyes can jump to the comments and be like okay there's the entry style button one through nine it's real easy to jump through and what's see what's going on but it's a lot of code I'm having to run this slider to see what's where and anyway it'd be nice what if we could just have the comments in that declarative fashion and there's no code there and the comments just knew run that block of code so that's the idea is to take each one of these things uh, some editors will have an option if you're using like a fancy editor and you can just like right click that and tell it to factor it out to extract method or whatever but I'm just gonna do it the old-fashioned way and go cut and then this initialize window thing will become a function so we'll just def so I didn't even need to cut it really I can just turn this into a function paste it um, go right there tab that over line it all up just like that so and then I'm gonna do it the more scripty Pythonic way of the underscores but camel casing like one way to do it would have been just left it like that drop that first one and say initialize window um, I kinda of prefer this method of doing it but anyway there it is it's like the exact same thing but maybe I should have left that was just kinda of to illustrate that but then we still need that initialize window call so the easiest way to do that I'll go ahead and initialize window okay there's the call for that one so I don't forget that to do that 
and then I'll do these a different way. I'll just say Control X to cut that. Then I'll paste it up here. Def create entry. Now that initialized window thing's getting in the way. Oh well. But I just want to leave those down there so they're still in order. This one's going to be def uh, set button style. And then in the future, if we're setting like multiple button styles or something, we could come in and generalize this function more or method if you want to think of it that way and give it parameters. That's always an option too. And so let's def create buttons one, two, nine. Probably not the best naming convention right there, but it'll work for the moment. have all this stuff over and then wide zero button is the last thing Def wide zero about two or three words is usually good these are uh, maybe leaning a little bit long of a name, but not too long. So, want to get that over more. Give that some more space. Given all these double spaces, I think according to Pep8, they're all supposed to be double spaced around the all the stuff against the rail. It's a function. Okay, so then for all this stuff, we can just come back and uncomment it and just convert it to its function name. This is a very natural flow. You don't really have to plan it out. It's just once things start get complicated, you uh, just jump over and do this. It's just that's kind of what technical debt is. Is it's like these are the things that you really, in hindsight, it seems like you should have done right out the gate, but you don't know what complexity level things are going to get to, and if you start trying to overly structure things too early on, it you realize like, oh, I should have structured it like that. This just lets you kind of just lump things together that make sense and put them in a, you just throw them on the canvas in a logical seeming order for the moment. And then you can go back and just sweep them over into their own piles. So if I hit F5 right now, unless there's some weird variable that name thing that's not getting passed around, which I wouldn't be surprised. Other than that, it should work. Yeah, totally worked, looks like. So that's good. And of course, if it didn't, we would just check our code, go over everything. So now we have each thing in its own little, I'd argue it even looks a little bit nicer up here. Just looks better arranged, better aligned. Everything's in its own container, and here's all the stuff right there. And then if we want to stop something from happening, we don't want to create buttons 0 through 9. We can just comment out one one statement just like that. Save and run. And there we go. Just the 0 button.
just like that. So anyway, I just wanted to share that flow that it, um, it might seem like so simple, right? But that sort of, that to me is the way to shift the complexity around. And this is effectively has become, they pretty much call it a module, you know, it's modular programming, but it's really, in all honesty, it's a singleton object. I mean, you can treat this as an object, you can pass it around like an object, you can try it out in Python. That's one of the benefits of Python. Um, but if you apply this same, the same principles of what just happened here, even in Java or some language like that, you could just push all this stuff. You could start out with that monolithic, like, uh, main function, and then you could just start factoring things out of that and pulling them off into their own methods. So that would be pretty much exactly the same thing as this. Thanks a lot.